Wait. Chat, did you hear that? Oh my god, dude. Oh, I almost had him. Did you hear the footsteps while I was flying over his ass? What the f Hi YouTube, Art here again with another audio video, and this is the video that a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm going to take that four part playlist and condense it down into one guide. Over the year of working with Warzone 2 audio and now kind of perfecting it for Warzone 3, whatever we're calling it, Warzone Urzikstan, I've found a lot of issues that people have ran into, mistakes along the way, mistakes that I made and instructions that I added to later videos. We're going to clean all that up and put it in one guide and you have found that today. Now if you already have all of the audio stuff installed and you've been following for a while, you're currently rocking the tune, there's only going to be one thing at the very end of the video that I'll highlight that will be different for y'all. This is mainly a guide from top to bottom for people that have not done the audio guide yet. A real quick explanation of how the audio tune works. What we're going to do is install a virtual audio cable. It's like a virtual audio device. Think of it as a, a cable plug on your computer that doesn't actually exist. We're going to take that and configure it with all of the magic that we need to make it sound good in game, and then use an application called Voice Meter to send that out to your hardware device which you listen to. The reason why this works is that virtual cable can be configured as a 7.1 surround sound device. So what Call of Duty thinks is you're connected to an actual surround sound device. We are not gonna listen in surround sound though. All of those magic steps I describe are gonna take all of those tracks and mix them down to stereo for you to hear in your left and right channel headset. In my opinion, all of the manipulation that I'm able to do before that happens really adds some space, depth, and location information to the mix because I think this is how they master the game. They make it for 7.1 because there are people out there that play it on 7.1 systems, and then they put a conversion file on it to make it stereo. That's why you have Windows default or stereo in the game. Typically, you can't take advantage of anything but stereo because there are very few devices you connect to your PC that aren't stereo. But what we're going to do in this tutorial is make a device that is surround sound that can convert it out to your stereo headset and sounds much better than stock. One more boring thing before we get into the guide, there are some rules for this. Number one, you need to watch this video on a different device than your game PC. So a lot of stuff's gonna get reset, audio devices are gonna get turned off and turned on through this whole setup, and you will get errors if you have this open on a browser on the device you're trying to do the steps. So pull out your phone, pull it up on a television, get a laptop, use your friend's computer, use your stream PC, whatever you need to do, watch this on a different device. The other big thing is if I'm talking too slow, I get it, please don't skip around the guide. If you comment below, Hey, this happened. I didn't. I what's going on? It's because you didn't follow a step in the video. So please turn me on 1.5x speed, whatever you need to do. Watch the guide from beginning to end. Don't skip any steps. You really got to follow it through. Follow the steps, follow along, and you can't really swap anything here. There's going to be a part two to this video where we can use something besides voice meter, and I'll tease that at the end of the video. But if you want the audio to work, don't ask, hey, can I use this? Hey, can I use that? Focus your efforts on following the guide, installing the software, and configuring it appropriately, and it will function. In further guides in the future, I'll offer alternatives for hardware control of the audio tune, as well as some in-depth guides of what we're doing here. But the main goal for this video is to get you a functioning audio tune. This really doesn't work well with sonar. If you have an Astro mix amp, it needs to be in the star position, not the headphone position. You can't use this with sound lock. You can't use it with spatial audio. None of that stacks with it. Trust me, follow the guide, and you will have great audio at the end. Now, before we begin, we're going to need all of the pieces. If you want it all in one place, I've linked the download package down below that has all the applications in it. It has the config files in it, as well as the text file that has the loudness EQ command credit to that GitHub developer down below in the description. Now, there is also the way to go where you can download each of the executables separately from their respective websites so that if you're sketched out about downloading installers for me, you can do it that way. Now, if you take that approach, you'll need to download the config files link in the description. That will have at least the config files in it, as well as the command text file to enable loudness EQ. You can see both of those on my screen, the folders might be different when I actually get around to uploading these, but right now, this is the config file. You'll see they're in here, they're the config files, and then the loudness EQ scripts, which we'll use later, and then this is the whole package, which has all the applications, which in this case is, again, Hi-Fi Cable, Voice Meter, Equalizer APO, Hisuvi, and Replugs. 
as well as the config files, which we'll be using. These might be named slightly different upon release, but the effects inside will be the same. Like the previous guides, I have uninstalled everything on my PC and I will be starting fresh. And I will be starting from the application package, which I've linked down below. Like I mentioned earlier, you can get them all from other places. This is the easiest way to download everything in one place and get it all at once. So I will be installing from that. The first thing you need to do is obviously download that. You'll start in the application pack and I've named each folder in order that we need to install it. So you'll go to Hi-Fi Cable, you'll double click and you'll install the Hi-Fi Cable. It will go through its steps. It says you need to reboot to complete. We do not want to reboot yet. Do not reboot until I tell you to do so in this video. So we'll hit OK, we'll continue. We'll go back. We'll go to Voice Meter. We'll install Voice Meter. We'll click Install. We'll let it do its thing. A browser window is open on my other monitor. You can close that. It's not important. We'll click OK. It also prompts to restart. We're not doing that right now. Once you've installed Voice Meter, you can go down to Equalizer APO, run this installer. Now, this part is really, really important. People seem to want to install this just anywhere. Equalizer APO works with Windows, like in conjunction at the very core, and it doesn't behave appropriately when it's installed anywhere else but the directory that you see on the screen right now. It must go to C slash program files slash equalizer APO and it cannot go anywhere else. So this must be default. If you've installed it before and you've installed it somewhere else, that probably contributed to your problems. But right here is your opportunity to change it. If you've never installed before, ignore what I'm saying and you can just leave this default. You can click next here. Again, click install, let it do its thing. Now, an important part about Equalizer APO, it's actually two main applications that we're gonna be using. The first one is configuration editor. That's where all of the configurations and the EQs and the effects that we're gonna be loading are applied. The other is called configurator, which is on the screen right now. Configurator decides where Equalizer APO is installed. And the way you should think about Equalizer APO is it's going to flag the audio device to say, hey, look for these effects in configuration editor. And the only one we wanna change is the hi-fi cable here, because what we're doing, like I said in the intro, is we're creating a virtual cable with our effects on it so that we can choose that cable inside of Call of Duty and have better audio. So from this list inside of Configurator, this is important because we'll be coming back to it later. You're gonna want to find the Hi-Fi cable here. You're gonna wanna check it and then select it in blue like I have it here. This allows you to go down to the bottom and click troubleshooting. This step, at this point in the step, it should have two boxes here for pre-mix and post-mix install APO checked. And it should say install LFX GFX, that's it. Once that's checked, you can hit OK. It says here this dialog can be reopened anytime by launching configurator.exe in the installation directory. And we're going to have to do that in a second, but for now you can hit OK. You'll get a prompt here that asks you to reboot. You'll want to check, I want to manually reboot later, and we'll click finish. Once that's done, we can go back and we'll install Hasuvi. Once you run it, it'll ask, do you want to unpack Hasuvi into the config folder of Equalizer APO? This is why it's important to install Equalizer APO in its stock location. We'll click yes here and you'll have this crazy command line pop up and install a bunch of stuff. Let it do its thing. It'll take a second and then you'll see Hisuvi pop up. This is Hisuvi. This application is linked to Equalizer APO and its job is to take the 7.1 surround sound that Call of Duty is going to be put out and mix that down to a stereo signal that we can hear on our stereo headset. So right now, we're not going to configure this. We will come back to this later. You'll just want to right click it and click pin to taskbar. Mine says unpin because it's already been pinned. Just pin it to the taskbar so we can come back to it later. For now, we'll just close this window and we'll continue installing. Sometimes on most PCs, it'll look different on Windows 11, depending on your theme settings. This window will pop up. So long as Hisuvi opened and you saw all of the bars and the different options, you can just click this program installed correctly. Once you're done with that, you can go back and we're going to install Replugs. Now, Replugs is just a set of VST plugins that we will install to modify the audio. Leave all this default, click Next. Must be installed to its default directory here, so go ahead and click Install. Once it says Complete, you can click Close. It says Replugs are now installed, you can click OK. Now, that is the end of the install portion. What we need to do now is turn on loudness EQ on the hi-fi cable that we installed. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna open the sound control panel on Windows. 
Now there's a lot of ways to do this. On Windows 11, if you go down to the bottom and right click and go to sound settings and then scroll down to the bottom to more sound settings, I believe you can open it. On Windows 10, it's super easy. You right click the speaker, you click sounds and you'll get this panel. The universal way to open this on any system, you can type mmsys.cpl, it'll open that same window. So we'll wanna be in the sound control panel for this. You'll see here in my sound control panel, I have a lot of devices. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna to wanna to find the hi-fi cable input. You can ignore this other cable on my system. You won't have this. This was for my own testing. If you want a guide on how to add a cable for regular loudness EQ down the line, let me know in the comments down below. The first step in configuring this hi-fi cable is we actually have to configure it. So once you're in the sound control panel here, select it in blue and click configure at the bottom. You'll have this window pop up where it'll prompt you to define the speaker configuration. You're going to want to select 7.1 at the bottom. You're just going to click next, next, next and finish. The next step here is actually enabling loudness EQ. So what we'll want to do is we'll go to the Windows search bar and we'll type PowerShell. We'll have Windows PowerShell here. You don't want ISE, ISE, x86 or Windows PowerShell x86. You just want straight up Windows PowerShell. You'll right click and you'll run it as administrator and this blue window will pop up. We're going to move that to the side for now. So you'll see two text files. One is normal loudness EQ and the other is called super short loudness EQ. Now again, shout out this developer Falk OSC. They have been providing this on their GitHub since I've started tuning and it's been a huge help. So huge shout out to them. But I had missed this step where they had added this little blurb and I'll, I'll show it on screen right now. Enable this if you want a shorter release time, only good for gaming, kind of not nice to listen to in other things. Release time refers to how long the compressor, which is loudness EQ, will stay compressed before it resets. And the faster it can react, the more accurate it can be to adapting to changes around you, like gunshots or explosions. So it's something that I've been playing with for the last couple days. It's what you've heard on my stream. If you've watched it, it's what you've seen in clips. I've set this up for most creators that have come through. And I think this does help a little bit. I don't know if it's a lot, but that's the script that we'll be using today. So you'll want to go ahead and open up the super short loudness EQ enable.txt. You'll just want to select the body of this. So from invoke web request down to release time too. And that's the special thing. The previous command was just this. There will be special instructions at the end of the video for people that already have the tune on how to enable this step. So you'll hit control C or you can right click and copy and you'll come over to Windows PowerShell and you'll hit control V to paste and you'll hit enter. Now it'll ask if you want to change this policy. In my language English, the letter to say yes to all is A, so I'll type A and enter and then it'll ask for the playback device name. And we are gonna want to add loudness EQ to the hi-fi cable input. So we'll type hi-fi cable input. Now at this point, before you hit enter, from this point on, audio is gonna break on the PC until we get to a certain step because we're modifying a lot of stuff in the audio engine. So just be wary, that's why I said, watch this video on another device. If you haven't already done that, pull out your phone, pull out another computer, if you have it, and pull up this video and start the video again. When we hit enter here on some PCs, it works instantly. When I press enter here, it'll probably be instant. For some people, they say, oh, this isn't working. What do I do? I used to offer another workaround. That workaround does not work. You must be patient, my friends. I promise you, I have ADHD and I have messed up so many of these because I just wasn't patient enough. After you hit enter, just wait for it to say importing loudness EQ something enabling, it will pop up. Sometimes I've hit enter twice. Just go get a drink, go get a snack, come back and I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm going to hit enter right now and you'll say import loudness activa activation into the registry, restart audio to apply registry settings. And you saw my sound control panel refresh on the left over there. So that's how you know it works. For some PCs, when you hit enter, it will just sit there. Import loudness activation will not pop up. You must wait. Go get that snack and we'll start again. So now that you've enabled that, we can close this window. There's another step though. The step of turning on loudness EQ actually breaks Equalizer APO. So what we're going to do is you can either search configurator. Some of you have indexing off, which means you can't actually search. So we're going to go down to E for Equalizer APO. 
We're gonna open it and we're gonna open configurator right here. Now, this is the window that popped up when we were installing Equalizer APO. And if you notice here, Hi-Fi cable is no longer checked. That's because we did the enable loudness EQ step. It's kind of funny. In order to enable loudness EQ, you have to have Equalizer APO installed on the virtual device. That adds the flag in order to turn that on. But turning that on breaks Equalizer APO. So that's why we're opening configurator again and we're gonna wanna go to the Hi-Fi cable. We're going to check it, we're going to select it in blue, and we're going to click troubleshoot down here, which shouldn't be checked for you. Now, by default, it probably loads up like this for you. So it'll say with it highlighted, install as SFX EFX. Most of you either missed this step or you just simply left it like this and hit OK. You have to make sure you change it to LFX GFX here and all four boxes on premix postmix are checked. Once that's done, you can hit OK. It'll ask you if you want to restart. We're not going to restart yet. Go ahead and hit no. Once you've done that, we're going to want to come back over to the playback tab. Hit configure. Just make sure it's still 7.1. You can cancel that. Go to properties and go to enhancements. You don't even have to click enable here. Just go to settings. Crank this all the way to the short side, which is now super short because we set that special command in the PowerShell. Go ahead and hit OK and hit apply. And now just to make things super easy, we're going to rename this device to art tune you can rename it to something else for me that's just been easy it's what i've put on other streamers pcs so they know what they're using when they use it because the way this tune works is it's only applied to this one device once that's done you can just hit okay while we're still in the sound control panel we're going to want to find the hardware device that you use to listen to the game for everybody that's going to be a little bit different could be the port that you plug your headphones in could be the mix amp that you use to listen to your astros the game deck for your steel series the list can go on and on it's going to be different for everybody for me it's this Realtek digital output which is my optical port that goes to my go xlr we're going to want to hit properties on that we're going to go to enhancements if you have it if you don't don't worry about it we just want to make sure that loudness eq virtual surround sound all of that in here is turned off because we don't want to stack effects. We're going to be do all of the tuning on the virtual cable. Make sure no spatial sound is turned on and we're going to go to the advanced tab. Now, this is really important. Everybody's hardware is going to be different, but make a note of what it is. If you have options, the best you should do for this audio tune is two channel 24 bit 48,000 Hertz. If you can't and you're locked into 44 one, that's OK. Just make note of that for the next steps that are about to come up. Now, you don't need to run it at 96,000 hertz. You don't need to run it at 32-bit. There are really diminishing returns, and some of the steps in this audio guide require either 44, 100, or 48,000 hertz. So make sure your device is one of those two. Once that's done, you can hit OK. We're going to want to go to the recording tab here, and we're going to want to make some changes because each of these cables has a different side to them. It's kind of complicated. We're not going to go into it, but there's an input and an output. We just want to rename the same icon here to the same thing we did over on the previous tab in the playback tab. So I'm going to name this Art Tune. And then under Advanced, this is really important. This defaults to 44.1. My hardware device was 48,000 hertz or 48 kilohertz. So by default, if we go back and look here, this side of the cable on the playback tab is already set to 24 bit 48. For some reason, this side doesn't set to that. And if you don't change this, you'll get crackling. So you got to go in here and you got to change this to two channel 48,000 or 441 on the other side if your headset only does 441. If you can change your headset or your audio device to 48,000 Hertz, change it to that and then make this match the other side. Once that's done, just make sure the name sticks. It didn't because I canceled out. Hit apply and hit OK. Now, the other thing we're going to want to change when we're in here is we're going to go to the voice meter output just below it. Hit properties. We can't rename this, unfortunately, without it bugging stuff out. So we'll just change that to the same 24 bit, two channel, 48,000 hertz. Hit apply and hit OK. Once you're done with that, we are done in the sound control panel. If you want, you can double check on the hi fi cable. Just make sure you have loudness EQ enabled and we can move on to placing the configuration files. So we're back in the app pack and we'll go to the config file section now and we're just gonna select both these files. Like I said in the intro, these files might be called something different on release. I'm just working with the workshop files I have right now. Don't worry about that. I guarantee you whatever's in the links in the description is the most up-to-date files. You'll wanna select both of these text files, right click and hit copy. 
Now we're gonna go to a totally different folder for Equalizer APO and add these. So we're gonna go to our local C drive. We're gonna go to Program Files. We're gonna go to Equalizer APO. We're gonna go to Config. And inside this folder, we're gonna right click and paste. Now, it's gonna ask if you want to overwrite the files here. Click yes, it's fine. We're gonna overwrite the config. If you don't, it's gonna write the config file in with a different name, and then the software won't recognize it. Once you paste those files in, we are done with that. Now, this step is totally optional. If you feel sketched out about deleting parts of an app, don't do this step. But this does remove an error that pops up in voice meter because we renamed the cable. Some of you were getting bad audio driver error. If you want to get rid of it, follow me. We're going to go to program files x86. We're going to scroll down and we're going to find VB and we're going to go into the voice meter folder inside of VB. We're going to scroll all the way down and look for this file called VB device check. This is what checks the names of the virtual cable. If you don't want that error, right click this, hold shift and click delete. It's gonna ask if you want to permanently delete this file, click yes, and you will no longer get that error. With that, we're done poking around in Explorer. We're gonna go ahead and move on to Configuration Editor inside of Equalizer APO. In order to get there, you can search Configuration Editor here, or like I said, you can hit Start. We're gonna find the E programs, Equalizer APO, Configuration Editor. Now, everybody was asking me about this error as well. This is totally a normal error. We only want Equalizer APO installed on one device, and that is the Hi-Fi cable, or what we've renamed now to be the Art Tune. This error is saying, hey, hold on a second, your default device doesn't have Equalizer APO. We're to get to the default devices in a second, but you don't want Equalizer APO installed on your default device. You don't want the Art Tune cable to be your default device. We're only gonna use that in Call of Duty. So bear with me, just ignore this error. We're only gonna have to open this when we switch tunes, maybe during the season or when you're setting things up. So you can just click no here. But yours should look just like mine because we did place those config files in there. If the red line isn't popping up down here or if it looks slightly different, don't freak out. It looks different based on resolution and how the window scaled and how you're zoomed in. So just follow along on the steps. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna hit the blue open button here at the top left and select the config file that you downloaded and placed in. Now here it's called the Urz temp. I'm most likely gonna keep it named that so you can open that here. Once you open that, the only thing you need to do in here is click both of these open panel buttons, check apply automatically, click apply and then click okay. And you're gonna do that for both plugins. For some reason, when I export the settings, it doesn't transfer over. So that's just the one step you're gonna have to do. Once you're done with that, you can close this tab at the top and you can even close this window. It's totally good. If you wanna make sure that Equalizer APO is installed on the Hi-Fi cable, when you click this drop down, the only name you should see under the playback devices is the Hi-Fi cable or Art Tune, whatever you named it. So we configured the Hi-Fi cable. We loaded the configuration files inside of Equalizer APO. The last things we need to do are configure voice meter so you can actually hear that virtual cable installed and also configure Hisuvi so that the surround sound is processed correctly. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with voice meter. So you can find voice meter in the start menu or you can just search for it like I did here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset all of the settings because for some reason, it just saved everything that I had done before. Yours should look like this. Totally blank, totally normal. Just really quick lesson on what voice meter does. It's an audio routing software. So as I go through it, I'll kind of explain what we're doing here. We're starting on the right though, so we can start there. From this list, you'll see all of the audio devices on your PC. What we're after here is what you listen to your game on or your PC on. In my case, that's the Realtek digital output because that's the optical cable that goes to my GoXLR. For you, it could be the headphone port. What voice meter's job is, is to route audio to that. That's why it says hardware out right here. So from this list, you're gonna choose your hardware device. An important note is for this to work with low latency, it must be one of the WDM devices here. Even better, KS, but we're not going to get into that in that video, in this video, because it's very complicated. If you want help with that, I recommend booking an appointment. It's lower latency, but it's very unstable. MME, if you choose that, will introduce way too much latency, and I think that's a lot of the issues people are having in the comments of my old videos. They're choosing MME, and it's causing way too much latency. Now, there are some devices that have trouble with WDM. I'll go ahead and select mine so you can see. 
if your device is going to work, it should default up here to 512. If it doesn't, it's probably like 1056 or something like that. That means your device probably has some issues, whether it be the software that's installed doing too much processing. That's too much to cover in this video. I recommend booking an appointment. I can help you with that. Once again, you want to select your hardware device, the WDM version from the list. Once you do that, we'll move on to the hardware input. Now, this is how we're going to hear the tune. So in this first section, number one, you want to pick WDM Art Tune. This is the virtual cable that we installed all the effects on. So what's going to happen is the sound is going to come out of this and play onto your hardware device. Again, in my case, that's the optical cable. A couple more settings before I demo this for you guys. So we're going to want to go into menu here at the top and we're going to want to check two things, system tray and run on Windows startup. That way, when you turn on the PC, this will boot up. And when you click close, it will exist down here in the tray. One more deep setting that we need to change here. We're going to go down to menu. Again, we're going to go to system settings and options. And we're going to change the WDM buffering. Now, this number is going to be different based on everybody's system. If you're on a more modern system with a faster processor, you can probably get this pretty low. I've ran it as low as 192 or 160 without any issues. All that does is lower the latency. It's really not noticeable. If you run it too low and your PC is not capable enough, it will start to disintegrate and robot. So you're going to have to try it out and see. I recommend the safe spot is about 256 samples and you'll want to make sure you're changing it on the WDM device, not KS, not MME, none of that. WDM 256 seems to be a safe middle ground. Once you have that configured, you can go ahead and close the settings window. So I just want to show y'all how voice meter works. I'm going to go ahead and open up the sounds control panel again and show y'all. We're going to scroll down and I'm going to select the art tune here and I'm going to click test. The audio is playing. That is so incredibly loud and it's playing out right here. And you can see when I hit test, it's also playing out of the optical output so I can hear it. So that's how I configure the audio tune and then send it out to your hardware device. Let's talk about default devices. With voice meter comes the voice meter input. It's a built in virtual audio cable. This is going to be your new default device. Why? Because this device has no EQ set up on it, no surround sound, no loudness EQ. This is just a plain old stereo audio device that you can use to watch streams, play other games, watch YouTube. There's just going to be no need for y'all to turn off any of the stuff that we installed on the hi-fi cable to get normal sound. In Call of Duty here in a little bit in this video, we will say, hey, use the art tune as the device. But for now, this will be your default. So as you can see, when I test it, sound plays here, but it's also playing out over my optical output. In another video, I am going to offer an alternative way to set this up without voice meter. I know it can kind of look intimidating and that alternative way will also give you hardware control. So let me know if you want to see that sooner rather than later in the comments down below. But for now, we're going to move on to configuring Hasuvi and some of the final steps. Tinkering with the audio tune can cause you more harm than good, but Hasuvi is one of the few things that you can play around with and see if something works. What I'm going to give you right now are the baseline settings that everybody should return to. This is very well vetted. It works incredibly well on the map. And the whole aspect here I'll explain of turning down your own footsteps and your own gunshots is one of the most OP things in, in audio tuning. And it's even stronger in this game. We'll leave voice meter open for now. We're going to need to come back to it, but we can come down to the taskbar where we pinned Hisuvi and we can open this window. Now, a couple little things we're going to need to change on the left here are common HRIRs and just for simplicity's sake we'll call these different flavors of surround sound. The one I've tested that works the best sounds the best in game is Atmos minus. It is the Atmos configuration just without reverb. In my opinion extra reverb just leads to clutter the mix so we're gonna go ahead and choose the minus option here. On the left under matrix up mix we're to uncheck stereo and we're to leave content format on automatic. We're not going to change any of the speaker position down below. I set my front channel to seven. Now, the front channel is your own experience of your operator's gunshots and footsteps. So your first person perspective, gunshots and footsteps. This isn't to be confused with things in front of you. It doesn't work that way. In my testing, I, I haven't found anything besides your own sounds that are affected by this. So don't be spooked. 
7 is the lowest you can take it without it sounding incredibly weird. It makes your gun nearly silent. You can hear through the shooting. You've seen my clips on Twitter. I'll show some here at the end. It is OP. Start at 7. Default is 100, so you can wiggle all the way up and down through there. All you have to do is you can type in the number and hit enter. You can even click and drag on the bar or use the arrow keys here to adjust. Like I said, I'm going to leave it at 7 and hit enter. The only other thing we're going to change is LFE, which is all of the bass in the mix, like the Michael Bay rumbles. We're going to set that to 0 and just cut all that extra out. Now, there is no save in this application, so long as the bar moves and is in place it has saved because it's technically saving to a text file that Equalizer APO is applying. So once that's done, there's one last thing we need to go in and do here. So instead of restarting the PC, we can just go into actions and we'll click restart audio service. And what this will do is relaunch and refresh the audio service on Windows, applying all the changes that we just made. Now, if you notice in the background, voice meter has started flashing red. That's because I refreshed the audio service. Now, if this ever happens to your PC, sometimes if you disconnect the headset, this will flash red, reconnect it, make sure all the hardware is in place and you can just go to menu, restart audio engine, or if voice meter is not open, you can go to the tray, right click voice meter and click restart audio engine. And then this will go from being red to being white and it's fixed. That restart audio engine has refreshed all of the cables and we should be good to go. I don't want to harp on this too much, but I really just want to touch on it one more time so everybody understands. Voice Beater is an audio routing program. So when you choose your hardware device, you're not going to be able to use that device anywhere else. If I click test, it says the device is being used by another application because voice meter is really grabbing onto that device and relaying audio there in a very low latency fashion. So your new default device will be voice meter input. If I click test, that tests just fine. This is the plain audio device, nothing installed. You can ignore this. This is for my testing. And then if I click test here, you'll see the sound come out. And now that we've refreshed it, you'll see that it keeps going. It plays not only the normal stereo test, but the test for all eight speakers in a surround sound configuration. And it's playing that out to my hardware device. Now is the point in the tutorial where you can go ahead and restart your PC. Once it has rebooted, we're going to want to open File Explorer, go to Documents, go to Call of Duty, Players, and we're to look for a file called options.4.cod23.cst. This is the configuration file for Call of Duty. I'm going to tell you exactly what the change and I'm sure people are going to still have questions. What about this? What about that? Well, the audio mix in here is just the audio mix that you pick in game. Zero is PC, nine is probably cinema or whatever's at the bottom of the list. Doesn't really matter. You don't need to change it. In previous guides, I have said, let's change audio wanted channels number. Don't need to do that. Zero is Windows default, which we want it to be on so that COD sees the fact that that hi-fi cable is set up as surround sound. So you can leave that as zero. What we're looking for is a little word called spatial. We're gonna go down and we're gonna switch this, like I said in my previous videos, whether to allow Microsoft's 3D Spatializer Windows Sonic mode or false present a standard 7.1 mix. I don't really think this does too much. If y'all wanna test and let me know in the comments, if it does anything, you can leave it false. You can try it true. For all of the appointments that I set up, I'm doing it the same way every time. Mine is set to true. Go ahead and change that to true and hit control S or file save and you can close the file there. So now that you've edited the config file, you can go ahead and boot up Call of Duty and you're going to navigate to the settings panel and the audio tab inside of the settings panel. Yours probably looks something like this. We'll first go over what it should be set to and then I'll explain what the settings do. An important part of how my audio tune works is it's configured on a device. It's not like this tune goes on your headphones or on your port. It goes to a virtual device, which then you hear on your headphones or your port. So the way you use the audio tune is simply by selecting it in the list. You can see this device here is called Art Tune, so I can select that. If I wanted default audio, I could choose voice meter input. That would be stock audio. If you have to play a competition or a tourney where they don't want any kind of sound cheese, that's how you would do that. You don't have to turn off the tune or on the tune. You simply choose the device without the tune on it. But for our use case, we're to choose art tune and we're to make sure speaker output is on Windows default because if it's not on Windows default, it will automatically mix this game down to stereo, which is not what we want. That will effectively null all of the work that we just did. So these three should look like this. PC speaker, art tune, Windows default. 
The only other important one really is making sure that voice chat is a different device for you because you don't want to put voice chat out on the art tune. It'll sound really bad. Turning down that front channel that low makes voice comms almost unlistenable. I'm using a different piece of hardware, so I have my own hardware device that I've chosen, but for most of you, you can just choose the voice meter input. It will then pass through that cable, which has no effects on it. Now, everybody is always asking me about volumes. Personally, all I adjust is I turn off all the music. I turn down the dialogue volume so the people announcing stuff aren't shouting in my ear. I leave the effects volume at 100. I adjust voice chat to what I need it to be. And then I leave my master volume at 100 because I have a million ways to Sunday to adjust it. I have my hardware device we're going to talk about in part two of the guide. I have my GoXLR. So if you need it quieter, turn down master volume. If you need it louder, turn it up. If you don't have control over your headphones volume because there's no dial, turn it down in game. There's no magic setting. This is just gain. Now a little bit about the audio mix. There are a lot of different options here and I tested all of them. As much as it pains me to admit, PC speakers had the loudest footsteps. It also had kind of the loudest everything, but I just feel like I hear more footsteps on PC speakers, so that's what I've been rocking, even though it doesn't sound the greatest. It says it has the tightest dynamic range there on the right. That just means it's very compressed. So it doesn't sound very nice because we're compressing with loudness EQ. I have compressors in the config files, and then the audio mix is super compressed, but it is very competitive. And they kind of go down the list from there. You can see it says tighter dynamic range, tighter dynamic range with bass boost. You don't want this one because my tune cuts out all the bass. There's so much extra rumble and explosions that just get in the way. You don't want to boost what we're already cutting. I've heard some people say sound bar is really good. I did some testing. It sounded too crowded. I didn't really like it. Home theater is okay, a little too quiet, and cinema is just way too quiet. So really, I would do PC speaker. And I think that's pretty much all of the important settings in game. That should have covered most of the speed bumps people are hitting throughout the guides, things that I learned along the way that people might not have seen because they were in a later video. Now we have it all in one place and we can start fresh from here. Hopefully this lasts at least the life cycle of this game. Can someone clip that? They're third floor on you. Ladder on us. Knock. I knocked one on you too, Matt. Nice. Damn. Another ladder. Oh, he knew. What the f The hardware that I kind of mentioned a couple times throughout the video is Elgato hardware. What you can use in place of voice meter in a lot of these places to route the audio is Elgato's Wavelink. Now, the caveat with this it's not free. It comes with one of four Elgato products. You can buy the Wave 1 or the Wave 3 mic. The Wave 3 mic is actually on sale as I'm recording this video. You can buy the Wave XLR, which is their Wave interface. It's a USB interface with an XLR port on it. Or you can buy, like I have, which I'll show on the screen right now, a Stream Deck Plus. Now, the Stream Deck Plus is the most expensive option, but it does give you hardware knobs, and the Wavelink software lets you control audio routing like voice meter, but in a much more user-friendly way. So if you want the guide on how to kind of modify the tune to work with that, let me know in the comments down below. I am planning on making it, but if I see a lot of interest, I'll make it sooner. If you want to kind of jump the gun on that, the cheapest thing you can buy, I think, is one of the Wave mics. I know that the Wave 3 is on sale for like 109 US right now, which is a crazy deal. This is also a great way for people that were trying to move away from the headset with the mic and get a dedicated mic because the Wave mic has a headphone port on it that will be the default monitoring device in the Wave software. So you can get yourself a nice set of IEMs, plug them directly into the mic, have a much nicer sounding mic, have IEMs, and operate the audio tune from something that isn't voice meter. So again, if that interests you, let me know in the comments down below. Now, an important thing to note that I get asked a lot, hey, can you make this louder, can you make that quieter, the chests are loud, this is loud, that's loud. I can only do so much. And my main goal was to bring down the clutter 
and bring up footsteps. Whatever came with that, came with that. And I think I've done a pretty good job. I wish I had more control. And if I find more things in the future, then I will definitely add them. But I've been cooking for hundreds of hours, like I said, and I think this is as good as it gets. And I think it sounds pretty dang good. Now, if you followed my steps through all of the videos and you trudged through all of that and you installed the new configs, the Urzikstan temp configs from a couple days ago, you already up to date. The only thing that's really changed is I've been testing that super short loudness EQ release time and we can enable that on your device. So that's what we'll do now. You need to download just the configs file. You will see the loudness EQ scripts and we'll open the super short loudness EQ text file. Again, we'll copy this section here from invoke to release time and we'll open PowerShell. We'll run as administrator. We'll paste that command in, we'll hit enter, we'll type A again, or whatever it is in your language for all, hit enter, and you're gonna type in the name of the tune device. So for me, that is going to be art tune. So I'll type art tune here and hit enter. Because I've already done it, it says loudness settings don't need to be enabled. For you, it'll say importing loudness configuration activation, resetting sound devices. Once that's done, you can close this. You'll wanna go to configurator again, open it, select the art tune and change this to LFX GFX. Make sure all four boxes are checked. Hit okay, it'll prompt you to restart. You don't have to restart. All you have to do is open Hisuvi, go to actions and click restart audio service or hit control S on your keyboard. It will refresh the audio service. You can restart your PC if you want to, just to be safe and you will be good to go. You now have super short loudness EQ enabled. To make sure it is, you'll go to properties, enhancements, click settings, and you just wanna make sure that the bar is slammed all the way to the left. If you still needed help with this, I do offer one-on-one -on -one appointments if you have a special use case with your hardware, something you can't figure out, or if you're just not that tech savvy, link down below is my Calendly where you can book a 30-minute appointment where I will remote into your PC, set all this up for you. You'll get access to a special part of the Discord where I offer continued support and special rates for retunes in the future. All that information is down below in the description. I know this was a super boring video. There weren't a lot of samples, but I just wanted to get this one in the books. The part two video, if you guys want to see it with some hardware options, will be coming up soon, as well as new filters for the Urzikstan map. Thank you guys so much for all the love on the channel. We have really exploded. I'm going to be live a lot over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash art underscore is underscore war. Going to be demoing some of those new filters. Make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell so you know when I upload that filters video. It'll also be a settings video. And uh, come on by and let me know in the live chat what other videos you want to see. I have some ideas for some controller videos because the curves feel kind of funny. I have some videos on working mouse input. Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments down below. And until the next video, I'll catch y'all later. Peace.